day grade 12 learners welcome to today's economics lesson my name is mr berry this lesson is brought to you by the northern cape department of education in collaboration with pagama research and development good day again grade 12. today we are doing revision program paper 2 our focus is the dynamics of markets our topic will be perfect market by the end of the lesson the learners will be able to answer prelim paper 2 when it comes to dynamics of market uh, perfect market today we'll be looking at section c question section c question on perfect market you find it in paper 2 question number 5 so question 5 of paper 2 which is section c you'll find the micro economics Microeconomics is the unit that you did in term two that include the perfect market, the imperfect market, and the market failure. So our revision today will be on the dynamics of a perfect market. But before we look at the section C of perfect market, we're going to look at our assessment plan for 2024. How are you going to be assessed? Right, so for paper two, what you have is you have microeconomics for paper two you are having microeconomics and economic pursuit as your main topics under in microeconomics you find the perfect market which is your perfect competition you find the imperfect competition then you find the market failure where do you find this question being um questioned in your question paper you find it in question one where it's compulsory for you to do the multiple choice the matching column and the terminology which is 30 marks out of this 30 marks the 15 out of the 30 will be from the microeconomics you also find it in question two so the entire 40 marks will be from the micro economics this topic microeconomics meaning they can ask you anything on perfect competition imperfect competition and market failure for this 40 mark you also find this in question four where there's 40 marks the out of 40 marks 20 will be on micro economics you also find it in question five the entire 40 marks is from micro economics so when you add all the marks you get one one five this is 15 40 20 40 only from microeconomics so if you can master microeconomics remember grade 12 you need to master both microeconomic and economic pursuit but if you are mastering microeconomics it means that you are already targeting to answer question two four and five if you are mastering uh, economic um issues if you are mastering economic issues then you are looking at if you are mastering economic issues you are looking at inflation tourism and environmental sustainabilities right grade 12 let's move to the structure of the paper so the structure of your paper each paper consists of 150 meaning both uh, paper one and paper two is 150 then that's 300 for your examination the duration of the paper is two hours it consists of six questions divided in three sections so you have section a b and c you are only going to answer four questions section a is compulsory on section b you choose two questions and then on section c you choose one that is total four questions that you are going to answer section a as discussed is compulsory 30 marks this include both economic issues and um, microeconomics section b it is question two to four this include um, question two which is your microeconomics question three which is your um, economic issue and question four that include both economic issues and microeconomics then you have section c you have two questions you choose one either question five your microeconomics or question six your economic issues then you get 150 right your question one 
which is compulsory you have the structure of question one the format of question one which is um, your compulsory question section a you have eight questions times two which is your 16 marks you are assessed from both units uh, four questions from microeconomics and four questions from economic issues then you have matching of items which is eight marks four questions from microeconomics and the other four questions for economic issues then for terminology you have six marks three questions from microeconomics and then the other three questions from economic issues right you are advised to write everything because once you leave blank spaces on this you are missing out marks section a is as important as anything else I know grade okay, 12 you like prioritizing your essay your essay is 30 marks excluding um additional part and section a as well is 30 marks so the marks are equivalent right so you need to also uh, master the terminologies so that you are able to answer section a right one question per main topic um then for question two section b you have one question per main topic and then one combination so for question two is one main topic for question three is one main topic then question four is combination of the uh, topics which is micro and economic issues let's look at your question two to question four question two to question four you'll have 2.1 3.1 or 4.1 this is what 4.1.1 or 3.1.1 or 2.1.1 you are having a low order question where you are giving names list that is two marks and then you have 2.1.2 or we can say 3.1.2 or 4.1.2 where you are discussing how why what and then that is two mark so your easy two mark on section b already you have this one where you are asked a lower order question to list for example list two types of markets and list um characteristics of a perfect market then that is an example question that you can get on 2.1.1 and then 2.1.2 now you are asked what how and why why is perfect market the most efficient market it's a two mark question where it, you need to apply the question is an application type of question right and you have 2.2 to 2.3 those are your data respond questions right so it can be 3.2 or 3.3 4.2 or 4.3 all of those are what are your data respond question out of 10 marks right so your 10 mark is scaffolded in this way it's one one two two four one you'll be listing something maybe in uh, in the graph or in the extract or not even given you may be listing something the next question again is to give one thing and then you have the other two mark is to describe a term so you need to understand your question paper it is one one two two for the first one you are listing you're also naming you are describing then it's an application question where you are asked what how why then the last question where there's four marks this is a higher order you are evaluating you are giving the effects of you are giving your opinion all the data response question they look like this this is how you get 10 marks so for every question there are two data response question that looks like this the first three question this is your easy marks so for every data response you must aim to have that four marks out of 10 the four mark is given because you are listing you are describing if you know your terminology you are not going to have a problem with the first three questions of your data response right let's look at 2.4 and 2.5 that can be 3.4 or 4.4 it can be 3.5 or 4.5 so your point four question which is an eight mark question it's a middle order question this is a question that want you to explain discuss distinguish differentiate draw a graph so this question is remembering information 
So you need to remember the information that you did in the classroom. You may be asked to distinguish between a cartel and a tacit. You may be asked to draw a graph in a monopoly where they are making an economic profit. Then it's remembering the information. Right, then you have 2.5 or 3.5 or 4.5. This question is a higher order question. It's also a eight mark question. Now, you are not only remembering the information, you need to apply the information that you learned in the classroom. Now you are asked how. You are asked why. The other question you are asked to distinguish between a tacit and a cartel. Then you are asked why do businesses collude even though it's illegal. Now it's a kind of a question that needs you to apply the information. You understand what is collusion. That is what you learned. However, we are not asking you to describe collusion in this case. You will be asked to describe collusion in the data response question number three. Here you need to evaluate, you need to give your opinion, you need to say how, why you are answering that for 2.5, uh, 3.5, and 4.5. And grade 12, do not avoid this question. Even though you are not going to maximize, maybe you are not going to maximize the marks, which is 8 marks, you can get something 4 out of 8, 6 out of 8. Remember here, you are bringing in your own opinion, so you may be right, so do not avoid this 8 mark question you can score some marks from here right let's see how to score mark in section a right so section a your 1.1 is a multiple choice question so for multiple choice question write one answer that is the most correct do not write two answers don't say a and b a or b you'll be wrong for both even if a was correct you must make up your mind avoid leaving empty spaces avoid because that can make you lose a mark avoid doing guesswork eliminate the wrong answers this will assist you in choosing the most correct answer so for paper one when you revised i did uh, show you that they will write for a b c d um, two of them here are absolutely wrong. Then you look at the options that you are left with, then you must choose the most correct answer. Let's look at matching the columns. Right, so matching columns, you have eight marks that you can score for matching the column. So to save time, read the description in column B. Then you match with column a, that is you saving time because if you're going to read a term in six uh, in column a then you go reading description in column b you are going to waste time if you are reading in column um, b and then the term says a situation where you can't make someone worse off without i mean better off without making someone else worse off in your mind you're thinking Pareto efficiency. Then you quickly go to section A, you look, oh, Pareto efficiency is here. Then you know that if Pareto efficiency is 1.2.7, you take A, you put it in 1.2.7. That will save you time. Unlike you reading Pareto efficiency, then going to nine other description, reading them, trying to match A with B. Rather read the description, then you match it with A. That will save you time. Always start with option that you are sure of. Remember this one extra uh, answer in column B. As soon as you get that, let's take for example, you read it, it was saying a, a situation where you can't, make, you can't make other people better off without making someone else worse off. It's Pareto efficiency. You go to column A, you don't find Pareto efficiency. Immediately that statement, scratch it out, does not exist meaning it's a wrong answer because it's possible for you to put it somewhere else where that it does not a, 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 a match with the script with the term so rather eliminate that one let's look at 1.3 how to score mark this one grade 12 you like running away from the terminology however there are other options if the marking guideline is having one term and then you come up with another term you are now giving a marker an idea that oh there is another term that 
also uh, can be described this way. So you do not leave this empty. Try to put in your description there. And also for you to master this, you must use your test book, read the description. If you are having a mind gap, read the description in the mind gap as well. Use your previous question papers. Uh, terms don't change. We use the same terms. So the terms don't change is how they put it. Then you may be confused. But if you are used to answering different question papers, you won't have a problem with this 1.3. So for you to master this, you must revise on your microeconomics, you must revise on your economic issues, uh, avoid writing GDP, GNP, write it in full and do not leave space, spaces and answer, answer all the question. Right, how to choose the best question in section B? Remember section B, you have two to four and you must only answer three i mean two questions you are given three questions two three four then you must answer only two how to best choose the question right so the first thing you need to read those four a uh, mark uh, which is your 2.1.1 2.1.2 3.1.1 3.1.2 4.1.2 5.1.2 then you are not going to choose your question because of that. That is an icebreaker. It gives you confidence to say, I'm answering economics today. Uh, I'm not doing business. I'm not doing any other subject. It's economics because they will say to you, list something that you are familiar with in economics. Then it boosts your confidence. It's an icebreaker. Just because you can list the two things that they say, list a uh, on 2.1.1, they say to you, list two characteristics of a monopoly, and you know it's a single seller, and you know that um, the demand curve is downward sloping, then you get excited to answer for 40 marks. Don't do that. It's an icebreaker. Do not hurry to select a question because you can only answer two marks out of 40 marks. Right, so what you need to do is to read your eight mark question. 8 times 2 is 16. So this is where you're going to prioritize. You read your 8 marks. After reading the 8 marks, you structure your answers. You are given time to read. So the time, the 10 minutes that you are given to read, you quickly check your, your four mark question, which is your, your icebreaker. Then you boost your confidence. Then you go straight to your 8 mark question, 2.4, 2.5 then you try to come up with ideas uh, to make eight marks, which is four sentences. The moment you know which question you can score, that's 16 marks, then you know which question to answer. You select that question. So if question two, you are able to get uh, both questions correct, you are understanding, you can structure your answer. It means you're choosing question two. You go to three and four. Then if Three, you also can answer the eight marks. That is your question. After that, you now know, you have an idea on which question you are going to answer. You read your data response, your, your data response question. You read the data provided. You try to structure your answers as well. Then after that, you look at all the three questions. Then you try to calculate your marks in the head. Be realistic as well you know questions that you are able to answer even though you won't get that mark but then at least you have a plan right don't fail to plan before you write plan before you write chances are you go to the exam already knowing that i have mastered microeconomics or i have mastered the economic issues i understand my inflation tourism and an environment i'm going to answer question three and question four and question six then you get to the exam you look at the eight mark question two makes sense more right so that's when the planning comes in you plan before you write and you also plan when you get to the exam room section c so you are given um question five and question six what you do you need to master the headings more especially for question six because you are only having three essays i mean six essays there three units so you need to master your essays for paper two in tourism in inflation and environment when it comes to a uh, question five it's broad questions are very broad for microeconomics 
they can ask you to discuss perfect market without graphs they can ask you to discuss it with graphs they can ask you to describe or to discuss a uh, collusion different types of collusion there, there is so many questions that can be asked as compared to a uh, question six question six is straightforward it's either you are discussing the benefit of tourism you are discussing the the effects of tourism you are discussing measures to combat inflation you are discussing um a, a cost of inflation are no longer our essays you are discussing either the measures to combat inflation or the effects of inflation or you are discussing government intervention on environmental sustainability so what i'm saying is that question six of paper two you go to the exam already knowing that a uh, out of the six question one of them is coming unlike in paper two question five uh, where the question can take any direction there's a time where learners were asked to discuss the king demand cap for 26 marks right so that's how uh, question five goes it can be anything you can be asked anything right so if you are planning to answer the section C, let's say you are planning for question six, then you know uh, you have tourism, you have inflation, you have environment. This is under what? This is under the economic issues. Then under microeconomics, you have the perfect competition, you have the imperfect one, and the essay here it can be anything and then you have the market failure the only straightforward one is the two in market failure this one are straightforward right the causes and the consequences of market failure these are the only two straight essays right otherwise when it comes to this two uh, they can ask it anyhow right let's look at the pre-knowledge uh, remember our topic today is the perfect competition so we are focusing on the perfect market so on perfect market this is what we've done in the classroom we looked at the characteristic of a perfect market after describing a perfect market as a market where there are so many sellers so many that no one can influence the prices one seller is not influential into the market there are too many so you discussed a characteristics you looked at the number the nature information the demand curve those were the characteristic of the perfect market that you looked at and so many more you distinguished between an individual business and the whole industry you looked at one percent selling and the whole industry and how these individual businesses take prices from the industry you also looked at profit maximization rule where you said profit can be maximized when mc is close to mr you discussed in detail which is an essay a equilibrium position with the aid of graphs when you're speaking of equilibrium positions we're talking about economic profit economic loss and the normal losses so when they say to you discuss in detail virus um, equilibrium positions with the aid of graphs they say to you draw economic profit economic loss and normal profit and discuss them that is an essay question that can come right we did the shutdown rule and then shutdown rule we said we are not going to shut down just because a business is making a loss you you can't advise a seller to shut down because they are making a loss but you can advise a seller to shut down if avc is close to the revenue or the avc is less than the revenue if the average variable cost is equal to the revenue or the average variable cost is less than the revenue then you can advise a, a, a perfect competitor to shut down because they cannot afford their day-to-day -day expenses and then on this one shutdown you also did a graph called a shutdown graph then you did competition policies 
on competition policies, you look at your competition commission. Firstly, you look at Competition Act 89 of 1998. You look at Competition Act 89 of 1998, and then you discuss the aims of this Competition Act uh, to reduce measures that are taking place or to regulate them, to stop collusion, to encourage small businesses to enter the market, uh, to ensure that they charge those businesses who are found that they are colluding and they are ex um, exploiting consumers. Then you had competition commissions uh, where they are doing investigation. You had competition tribunal where decisions are being made. Um, and then you have competition appeal court where people are not happy with the decision that was made then they go to the appeal court uh, it's same as a high court for commerce so the appeal court they go there to say we are not happy with uh, the decisions that were, were made uh, according to whatever charge that they had so you have three three institutions your competition commission investigation are taken there if they are suspecting that businesses are colluding or the measures that they are doing are for wrong reasons remember merging is not a problem but if you are merging for wrong reason then it becomes a problem and then collusion it's illegal it's not allowed so those businesses found doing those things are going to be charged we have example of businesses that were found uh, uh, trying to uh, inflate prices or trying to do things that are not right. You're talking about your big banks, APSA and other big banks, where they tried to fix the prices of exchange rate. They were found, you're talking about SMAG and few more businesses that were found guilty of uh, not following this Competition Act 89 of 1998 so those businesses and um, they are being charged and then we know the reason we like competition uh, when we talking economics we say competition will increase production for our economy to grow we need an increase in production capacity of a country right so let's quickly remind ourselves of the characteristics of a perfect market so what was discussed um previously here grade 12 which is your uh, um, information on the examination guideline. It is important for you to make sure that you go to your examination guideline. Everything that is here, you do not go to examination without understanding the characteristics, without being able to distinguish between individual business and industry, without understanding what is this profit, profit maximization rule right without knowing this essay of uh, equilibrium positions the other essay can be this one and then without knowing the shutdown rule and the competition policies it is important for you to do what to follow whatever is in examination guideline and make sure you know everything on the examination guideline before you go for your exam this goes to all the unit that we are doing all the 14 units that you have all the units it's 14 remember we have 14 units eight of them is paper one six of them is paper two so examination becomes your bible examination becomes your everyday a, 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 a book you always refer to examination so that you avoid reading things in the textbook that are not being examined anymore so the examination uh, guideline is to tell you what is it that is being examined this year right let's look at the characteristic remember if you find this is an essay you are not going to you are not going to write it like this we do not list you write in full sentences one of the things that will make you master and get the marks that you want grade 12 do not assume that the marker knows what you're talking about put it the way it is write it in a full sentence write it like you are writing for a fool so a person must understand, write it like you are writing for a person who does not know economics. Because if you tell me, uh, for example, I ask you collusion uh, in a perfect market and you say no collusion, then a person who is not doing economics won't understand no collusion it means what? Or impossible, does not make sense. You must put it in a full sentence. They cannot collude because there are too many to sit down 
and uh, influence prices or quantity, then a person would understand what you're talking about. So make sure that you answer in full sentences. We do not mark listing. Let's look at this as, a, as an, um, a reminder of the characteristics that you've done in the classroom. The number of businesses in a perfect market, everyone is saying many, right? So there are so many that no individual firm can influence the market price. That is true. There are too many sellers when it comes to a perfect market. Maybe that's why we say it is a perfect market. It is a perfect market because there is competition. Right. And then the nature of the product, everyone is saying homogeneous, which is correct, standardized, identical. So when you put it in a sentence, you say a, a perfect market sells a product that are exactly the same. So you cannot differentiate one from another. Right. Entry is completely free. So you can put it in a sentence as well to say that there's free entry and exit in this market. Right, meaning there are no barriers to entry. Collusion is impossible. Remember that too many. Collusion is when few businesses are coming together to influence prices and quantity. It is impossible with a, a perfect market. There are too many. So it means they'll have to fill in a stadium for them to collude, which is those two impossible. Information. The information is complete. Control over price, they are price takers. They take their price from the industry. Their demand curve is horizontal or perfectly elastic. What does this mean? It means uh, consumers are very responsive to prices. We know too much. The information is complete. There are too many uh, uh, sellers. They, they are price takers. Everyone is selling at the same prices. So if they decide to change prices, we are perfectly elastic we respond immediately they are selling exactly the same product so what you're doing you go buy from the next person meaning you respond perfectly so so it is perfectly elastic our response is perfect it's clear if they change prices we move away we buy somewhere else we have the information the, the, the product is exactly the same and then we know the price long run they are making a normal profit. So in a short run, a perfect competitor will make economic profit, economic loss, normal profit. But in the long run, they can only make a normal profit. Reason being, because of this free entry and exit. The moment a perfect competitor enjoys a economic profit in a short run, we see a, one of your classmates is selling something, in the classroom, your classmate is enjoying economic profit, which is a super unnatural profit. And it's easy for you to also get uh, the information where to buy the stock. You do it, you go buy the same thing and you start selling as well. So you are creating a competition for this person. So this will drive the prices down. Once the prices are down, you go back to normal profit. So whoever who is still in the market will be making a normal profit. Same, if the, the, the person selling, oh, now it's many of you. It was only two people selling this product. And then the price were high because the demand was there. And there was only two sellers. Now it's 10 of you selling, right? The prices are now driven down, meaning you are making a normal profit. The prices are driven down. Remember, prices respond, respond to the demand and the supply right the prices respond to the demand and the supply this was the price that was so the product was sold at five rand now that there's too many of you there's so much supplier the supply increase anything that increased shift to the right the supply increases the price go to two rands what happens now you are no longer selling at five rand you are selling at two rand it affects your profit you go back to a normal profit you are no longer making a super abnormal profit you go back to a normal profit now uh, it continues that more people are entering to a point that you are making a loss when you make a loss again uh, it's a free exit as much as it's a free entry when you were only two there was a free entry now from this 10 again there's a free exit people can leave the market so when they leave the market they are leaving and then only five people now are left in the market the the, the loss will move to a normal profit now 
So when supply in, uh, uh, decreases, the prices are going up. So that's why in the long run, you will never find a perfect competitor making economic profit or economic loss. When they make economic profit, there will be people entering the market. It's free for them to enter the market. The supplier will increase. When the supplier increase, the prices will decrease. Then they go back to a normal profit. When they are making economic loss in a short run, there's a free exit. Some people cannot stand the loss. They will leave the market to start something else. When they leave the market, those ones who are left in the market, those who didn't leave the market, there will be very few, meaning supplier will decrease. When supplier decreases, it drives prices up, right? Because now there's more demand and the supply is less, then it will drive the prices up. Once the prices is up, they are no longer making economic loss, they go to a normal profit, right? So that's why we say a perfect competitor can only make a normal profit in the long run. Their output, a perfect competitor is the only market structure that is efficient. They are achieving both the production efficiency and the allocative efficiency. So they do achieve what we call a Pareto efficiency. Why is a perfect market the only market that achieves efficiency? They do not have a choice. They are selling a homogeneous product. They are price takers. People have information about their product. So they need to produce wisely without wasting their resource. If they decide to waste their resources, they cannot shift their high cost to pro to consumers. Listen great one. Well. If they decide to do what? To produce inefficiently so, meaning they are not using their resources wisely. They cannot shift their high cost of production to us because they are price takers. If the price in the market is five rand, they can't charge seven rand. The moment they charge seven rand, we leave that market. We are perfectly elastic. We are very responsive. We leave, we go somewhere else. We are going to buy the same exactly a, a product from someone else at the right price. And it's going to satisfy what? Our utilities, we are going to benefit the same way as if we've bought from that person that is seven rand at five rand. So they need to produce wisely, Make sure that their resources are not wasted and allocate exactly what people want because their market, they cannot shift prices to consumers. Unlike in a monopoly, a monopoly can be inefficient because if they are charging, if they decide, ESCOM is a monopoly, example of a monopoly, if they decide not to use their resources wisely, they misuse their monies, then the cost of production become high. They are going to shift the cost to us. We are going to pay high price for electricity because we have no choice. It's a unique product. We must buy from them. So they can be inefficient. They can get away with being inefficient. But with a perfect market, you can't. All right, let's. So they tend to produce more at a low cost, at the low prices, right? The example of a perfect market, we say a perfect market is an ideal market that does not really exist because it's difficult to find a market that will match all the characteristics. Uh, the characteristics that I've mentioned here, it's just a few. We have, for example, all the factors of production must be mobile for you to be a perfect market. All the factors of production must be mobile. Now we look at your factor of production, the mobility of it. Some of the factors of production are not mobile. Let's talk about a labor. A labor is a factor of a production. Yes, you have feet, you can walk. But when you talk about mobility, as a teacher, I cannot go to the hospital and start working as a doctor. So I'm not mobile. Even if the country is in need of doctors, they will have to train people. If I want to be a doctor, I must go to school, be trained for that seven years. So that's me being immobile. It takes time uh, to be skilled. Or it can be immobile effect that I do not want to move from a, a, a Northern Cape to work in Cape Town, for example. You are immobile because you have ties in Northern Cape. You have your family there. You don't want to move all the way to work in Cape Town. What does that mean? It means as a factor of production, you are immobile. So think about machines. You buy a machine to produce caps. Now it's winter. 
people need heads. You can't use the same machine to produce a head. It's immobile. It's a factor of production that is used. Talking about land, land is immobile, right? So you see, it's difficult to find a business that match directly with the perfect market. Uh, even those businesses that are selling homogeneous product, look at your 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 maize meal, salt, sugar. They are homogeneous. They give us the same certification. I don't see the difference between sugar. However, they are trying to do it heterogenize the same product. It's homogeneous. They try to come up with uh, things to say a salad is better because of this and that and that and that. It's them trying to do it shift away from a perfect market. They are trying to heterogenize a homogeneous product. You see, so that's why you find it difficult to find businesses that are perfect competitors. So our example will be JSE and agricultural product. With agricultural product, we can mention a cotton. Before it becomes those, it's a cotton. So agricultural product, you can talk about fruits and whatsoever. So these are examples of a perfect competitor market. Right, let's look at the three rules that we have. Remember, there are three rules. There is a profit maximization rule, there is a profit and loss rule, and there is a shutdown rule. The profit maximization in this one is Z. D is cost 2, AR is cost 2, MR. Right? Remember, whenever you draw a graph, don't be like me. Always label your axis. Right? When you label your axis, you have quantity. I'll just put Q there, and then you have price, uh, cost, and revenue. Right? Then the moment you put the MC, this is profit maximization. Profit maximization rule, it means MC is equals to MR. But when you are doing the TR and TC graph, it means TR is equals to TC. But this one only applies when you are doing the TR and TC graph. Then you have a profit or loss rule. This one is where you put in your AC. Right? If your AC touches here, yeah, grade 12, what is this? normal profit if your ac is up here what is this economic loss if your ac is down here what is it economic profit so when you put your ac then you get what the rule profit or loss without ac you cannot know if you are making a profit or a loss then you have the shutdown rule this one even if you are making a loss it's fine even if you are making a normal profit, it's fine. Normal profit, it's enough profit to keep the business going. Shutdown rule, it only applies to us when we introduce, can I just use this AC now and call it a AVC? When you introduce average variable cost, then a point that touches MC here at the average variable cost, it becomes what we call a shutdown point. What is a shutdown rule? A shutdown rule, it means you cannot cover your variable cost. It means a business cannot cover their variable cost. What are variable costs? Are costs that can be avoided by the business by shutting down if a, they are making what a loss. But then variable costs are costs that a, we make when we are producing. Those are the variables. We have fixed cost. The fixed cost, regardless of the production or not, you still pay. Rent is a fixed cost, right? A, 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 a depreciation is a fixed cost, right? Then you have variable cost. A variable cost will be if you are doing tables, the wood that you are using. If you are using electricity to produce, electricity becomes a variable cost, right? A variable cost is what you use. If your business is to transport people, so the money to pay petrol, it is a variable cost meaning if you are not taking people to work then you don't have to pay petrol that is a variable cost if you can't cover a variable cost then you can shut down because it means now um uh, how do we put this it means you don't have a, a way forward because you do what you have to cover only the variable however when it comes to what the fixed cost there's no choice that's why in a short run even if you are making a loss don't advise that uh, business to shut down because you have a fixed, in a short run, you have a fixed cost. A short run, it means it's a 
it's a, it's a period where a business it, it has at least one fixed cost right so if you have a fixed cost if you shut down who's going to pay for your fixed cost no one if you sign a lease agreement to say i'm going to rent this room you tell your principal i need this classroom i'm going to be tutoring my learner uh, other fellow learners in this classroom and for me to take care of this classroom i'll be paying 500 so even if they're not coming uh, only 400 you are only collecting 400 you still have because you have signed a form to say for six months i'm going to use this place so you still have to pay it so even if you are running at a loss to cover your fixed cost you need to continue with your business right uh, let's look at profit maximization it occurs in two ways where mr is cost to mc we've mentioned this or when tr is cost to T tr is cost to tc when you are using profit and loss i mean your tr and tc accounts the individual firm is responsible for choosing the best output they can produce to maximize profit so even if you are making a loss you must produce at the profit maximization because you'll be minimizing the losses Producing below or above profit maximization will result in the firm failing to maximize its profit. Right, let's look at the profit maximization. This is a profit maximization when you are looking at an uh, individual business. And then here, when you are using the TR and the TC, profit maximization is this one and this one. Where TR is cost to TC, TR is cost to TC, yeah, MR is cost to MC. That's why it's e, we call it a profit maximization, right? So this is your normal profit, normal profit. And also here, look at the widest distance. The widest distance between, yeah, between TC and TR, you maximize what? Your profit. So here TR is cost to TC, that becomes a normal profit and the widest distance. Yeah, there is a distance, but you cannot maximize here because it's only a short distance. And then here, where there's the widest distance, then you are able there to maximize your profit. Same as here, where MC is cost to MR, you are able to maximize your profit, right? And then where TR is cost to TC, that becomes a normal profit because here, yeah, if you want a normal profit, we put a AC that touches, meaning AC is cost to AR, it becomes a normal profit. Right, let's look at the individual market and the industry. How are the price takers? So your individual firm, it's a price taker because they take the price as it is from the industry or the market. If price is two rent, they are also going to sell at two rent. Doesn't matter what quantity they are producing, they are going to take the price as it is. Right, so that graph, let's just look at the graph. There is a market force where demand is cost to supplier. That is the price that is going to be used in the individual. The demand curve in a, perf in a perfect market industry, it is downward sloping. However, for individual, it is horizontal. For the entire market, it is downward sloping. For individual, it is horizontal. So the question can ask you to differentiate between a demand curve in the industry or in the individual business. You say for the whole market is downward sloping. A demand curve of a perfect market for the whole industry is downward sloping. However, for an individual industry, it is perfectly elastic or it's horizontal. Let's look at the economic profit as one of the graphs in a short run. Right, so when you look at this graph, already you can see that we are making economic profit because the ac is below the ar right so when you plot your graph you start with your labeling of x's when you write price this side 312 if you draw your graph and you write only price you are going to be wrong we are not even going to mark the quantity as well because this is one mark for writing quantity uh, and then cost and revenue this side then you get one mark right then you can put your 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 demand curves your revenue curves mr and mc then you put your ac then your mc where mc meet uh, mr 
then you have your profit in exhumation, right? Then uh, the distance between the AR and the AC here, where it touches at the lowest, it becomes your economic profit. This graph, it shows an individual firm making economic profit in a short run. Remember, in a short run, you can make economic profit, but not in a long run. The firm is making economic profit because AR, this one, is greater than the AC. The AC is below, the AC is below AR. To calculate this, you take what? To calculate this, you say TR minus TC or AR minus AC. Let's just do a quick calculation for this one. You have, let's use the TR formula, TR minus TC. So you take, for TR, you must use what? The average revenue. For TC, you must use the average cost. So this one will be 5 times 10 minus 3 times 10, which is P times Q price times quantity then you have um your 50 minus 30 and then your answer is 20 and it's positive it means you are making a economic profit or using the other you can say ar minus ac times quantity your ar is five times um five minus three times ten which is 2 times 10 and your answer is still 20 so you are making what a you are making economic profit because it is a positive answer let's look at the loss right so this graph is a loss how do we see the loss ac is above ar ac is up there it's above ar so you make a loss so what do you, how do you get this quantity? You must take MC and MR where they meet here. It's an E and that is your profit in exhumation, right? And then you go here to get your quantity. Then you go up until you touch AC. Where you touch AC, you can turn. This become what? It becomes your price cost. And then this is a price revenue, right? The graph on the left represents individual firm making economic loss in a short run. It is a short run because economic loss is only possible uh, in a short run and impossible way in a long run because no businesses can survive economic loss in a long run. The firm is making an economic loss because AR is less than AC. And here also grade 12, we can do our calculation where we are using TR minus TC or AR minus AC times quantity. So you can use those both formulas and your answer must be negative. Right, the answer must be negative. Let's use the quicker one, which is AR minus AC times quantity. AR is 10. Remember, AR, I mean, AR is 8. Remember, AR, it goes with what? With the slide. AR, which is minus 10 so that is a times 50 so that is negative 2 times 50 so it's a negative 2 times 50 so we're not going to do math that's 2 times 50 which is 100 and the answer is negative 100 because it was a negative from here so the answer will be negative when the answer is negative it means that um we are making a loss right and then there is a normal profit a normal profit your answer must always be zero economic profit is a positive uh, economic loss is negative normal profit your answer is zero normal profit it means it's enough profit to keep the business going remember in economics we're not only talking about explicit cost we talk explicit cost and implicit cost Right, so the explicit cost is the cost of running your businesses, your expenditure, and then the implicit cost is your opportunity cost. So they are both included in our cost. That's why it is okay to make a normal profit. So here, it's making a normal profit because AC, when you look at AC, it's exactly equals to AI. Right, in the graph on the left, we see that average 
cost is equal to the average revenue. This means the total revenue is equal to the total cost. Normal profit is the minimum amount needed to keep the business going. The point where AC intersects with AI is referred to the break even point. The business is still maximized profit where MC is equals to MR, that is profit maximization. Let's just put values here. Let's say this is 10 and this is 5. Then to do your, 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 your normal profit, you say TR minus TC, which is 10 times 5 minus 10 times 5. 10 times 5 is 50 minus 50. Your answer is 0. When your answer is 0, it means you are making a normal profit. Let's look at the long run. So this is a long run normal profit. How do you see the long run? You have L, long run MC and long run AC. Right, then you are making a normal profit in a long run. Remember, even if you are making economic loss, in a short run, in a long run, you make a normal profit. Even if you are making economic profit in a long run, you make a normal profit. Right, this is the shutdown graph. So how do you see that it's a shutdown graph? By AVC. Whenever you see AVC in a graph of a perfect market, and they ask you what graph is that, you must say it's a shutdown graph. Whenever there's AVC. Right, so this graph, it represents a shutdown graph because we cannot cover our ABC. Point S is called what? A shutdown point. If ABC is close to MC at its lowest, then the business shut down. At S, ABC is close to the average revenue. No output can be produced. Below this 100, we can't produce. So also, MC, remember, it, it represents a supply cap. So MC is also known as a supply cap. But in this graph, not the entire MC is a supply graph. MC is where from this red dot going up is what is a supply cap. Anything below this, we are no longer supplying because the business has shut down. The moment we touch this ABC here, we no longer supplying. The business has shut down because we cannot cover our average variable cost. Right, and then we have competition policies. Right, so you did competition policies. Competition policies wants to promote competition and prevent abuse and exploitation of economic power. Instead, exploit the advantage of healthy competition to benefit the society as whole. So competition is important because it promotes healthy competition uh, for the economy to grow. There will be more production and then consumers cannot be exploited. Right, the aim of competition policies in South Africa is to prevent abuse of economic power by monopolists. Sometimes monopolists can abuse their power, charging us high prices. Regulate the growth of market power by means of takeovers and measures. We regulate takeovers and measures. Prevent restrictive practices especially by oligopolists, such as fixing uh, of selling prices. This is collusion. So collusion need to be what? Prevented. And then also abusing of power prevented. And then we do what? We regulate measures. They are not wrong, but then we need to regulate them. Contribute to the developmental objective of the state and improve efficiency in the markets. Right, so Competition Act, they have three institutions. We have Competition Commission, Tribunal, and Appeal Court. The competition, they make the investigation of anything that uh, it seems like it is a restrictive behavior. Tribunal will be making decisions based on the investigation of the commissioner. And then Appeal Court, we only go to the Appeal Court if we are not happy with the decision made in the tribunal. Right. The Competition Commission tries to give all South Africans equal opportunities to participate fairly in economic activities in order to make economy more efficient. One of the provisioning uh, of this act, uh, it is 
a must be advised of any measures and take over so before any measures and takeovers take place they should uh, advise the competition commission so that they can regulate if it's for the wrong reason or the right reasons measures cannot take place without the agreement of the commission when commission evaluates measures any matters relating to competition and efficiency and the public interest must be taken place so measures is when two businesses are coming together are they coming together to fix prices or they want to make more production so when they are coming together they must create competition and then it must be efficient and it must be for public interest for the consumers as well the tribunal the competition a commission makes a recommendation and submit it to the tribunal the tribunal can accept or reject so they are making this in order to accept or reject recommendation they get from the commission and then the last one is the appeal court if there are any dispute over the recommendation they are referred to the appeal court so this one will act as a high court they will make the final decision if there was any dispute of the decision that was made by the tribunal right grade 12 so that is um revision of what following your examination guideline we revised um we revised your 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 your, your perfect market following the exam guideline so grade 12 will do this essay together the essay says discuss in detail this is a, a section c c question discuss in detail virus equilibrium position of a firm in a perfect market with the aid of the graphs we've already discussed the three graphs in a short run so we're going to look at the same three graphs in an essay form question and how the additional part is how effective is competition policy in regulating measures and takeovers in south africa remember measures and takeovers are not a, 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 a restricted however we do what we do regulate them right so for this essay you need to have introduction the body and additional part then the conclusion right let's look at how to respond to this essay question right the first thing is to do what to write the introduction the individual the individual business can make economic profit economic loss or normal profit in a short run they are referred as a short run equilibrium position in a long run individual business will only make a normal profit for here you can introduce by describing as well what is a perfect market by saying that a perfect market is a market structure that has large number of businesses uh, operating that they cannot influence the prices then you are correct right so the first one is economic profit so you draw your economic profit you label your excess quantity um, you label your price cost revenue there's only one mark for labeling both uh, excess right and then there's a one mark also for the the information on the graph here yeah. then that is two mark then you are marked for writing mc and ac which is that your cost caps then you have a mark for what for your revenue caps and also for shading your economic profit then you can discuss your economic profit as a situation where ar is above ac right and then you can also mention that where mr is close to mc it is a profit maximization then you can do your calculation that will depend on the uh, amounts that you have then you do the calculation either using tr minus tc or ar minus ac times quantity then you have economic loss economic loss uh, your ac will be above also you must start with your excess this mark for excess and then you put your revenue cap you put your cost caps great up always this is i would advise you to always start with what ac right before you put mc why once you start with the mc when you put your ac it won't cut at the lowest so your ac your mc must always cut at the lowest so if you start with the 
AC, then when you put your MC, it can cut at the lowest. We must always cut our AC at the lowest because we want to produce at the lowest cost as possible. Then you have a normal profit, right? You get a mark for writing normal profit, for labeling axes, for labeling your uh, cost caps and revenue caps, for putting in your profit maximization. Then you can discuss profit, uh, normal profit as a minimum earnings required to prevent the business from leaving the market. And then you say that normal profit, you get it when TC is equals to TR. Right, that's where you maximize your 26 max. Right, let's look at the additional part. How effective is competition policy in regulating measures and takeover? So you can say it is effective or not effective. So it is effective because uh, put, they put in places the Competition Commission, Tribunal and Competition Appeal Court. We've discussed that. To investigate and approve measures and takeover investigating whether it is okay to do this measure or not, right? So it is successful because they do investigate and then they give a decision to go ahead or not. Taking into the account the public interest effects such as employment. So before they can even accept these measures, are you merging your businesses so that you can lay over people? If not, then yes, they do take into consideration that uh, this measures is not there to affect people so that people can be unemployed. Considering the ability of businesses uh, owned by disadvantage to become more competitive. So even if they are uh, investigating this, they still want other business to be able to compete with this business that are major. Providing services to local businesses to ensure sustainable um, sustainability to local producers. So they do provide certain services like a uh, correct infrastructure so that small businesses can also be sustainable. They ensure that measures are not for the sake of creating market power. This is very important. Measures must not there for them to own that market, for them to have more market power. Looking into details of each case and come to a suitable decision. So they must make sure that this measures is not for the wrong reason. Declining the measure where A Link wanted to take part with the SA Fair in 2018 to limit competition, they declined this one when SA Link wanted to come together with SA Fair to limit competition. That was declined. It was a big, big measure that was going to affect our economy. And then approving of measures with conditions. Uh, between Regent and Hollard insurances companies in 2017. This were approved because the, the our motives was not to own the market. The condition was, was that no employees may be retrenched for the period of three years after the merging. So even if you are merging, it shouldn't be so that you cut costs and you uh, retrench workers. So anything that you may say or hear that is relevant to the question, then the maximum is 10 marks. Then for conclusion, it's a higher order. You come up with your idea. While competitive markets may present challenges to ethical behavior, a firm committed to uphold ethical standards despite competitive pressure is crucial in maintaining integrity and trustworthy in the market. Ethical behavior remains a choice influenced by firm's value, culture, and leadership. You can close off with any correct higher order conclusion. Right, grade 12, today we looked at um, how your paper two look like and then we followed the examination guideline on characteristics, different rules uh, that you have. You have three rules, which is your profit and loss rule where AC is above AR when it's a loss, AC is below AR when it's a profit, and then AC is close to AR when it's a normal profit. And then we looked at profit maximization. So there are two types of profit maximization, where MC is close to MR, and then where this TR and TC graph, where there is a distance between what TR, the widest distance between TR and TC. Because when TR is close to TC, you are making a normal profit. However, the distance on that graph of TR and TC, the distance that is the widest, that the widest distance, we call it what? 
a profit maximization or we can find it where a, your MC and AC are meeting it is a profit maximization and then the shutdown rule we find it where you are introducing AVC when there's AVC we cannot cover our variable uh, average variable cost we shut down right and then we look at competition acts where you have three institution the commission the tribunal and the appeal court then we look at characteristics as well so grade 12 um again just a reminder go through your examination guideline then you see that economics is very easy if you are following that examination guideline thank you very much for joining in today's class i'll see you next time keep well